Hello, I'm Simon. Welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'm going to be building a shelter for my wheelie bins. Let's get tinkering. The boards for this project came in six metre lengths, so my first job is to reduce the stock down to size. To give me a little more support on my MFT style workbench, I flip up the router table and pull out the lumbar support extension on the right. I have videos on all these additions to my workbench and I'll leave a link to them in the video description for anyone who is interested. These long pieces will be six legs. Each leg needs to be cut differently, so I label them to reduce the chances of making a mistake. I'm working to a plan I'd drawn out using SketchUp. Whilst this is a simple build, I have some constraints. Make it too high and I'll see the bin shelter rather than the green roof from my kitchen window. Too short and the bins won't fit. I'm now cutting the short sections that will form the sides with the legs. The design is partly based around a lattice fencing panel. These will be cut in half using my oscillating multi-tool. I'll leave a link to a review of this tool for anyone interested. The lattice will form the infill for the sides, providing a decorative element to the build. But first I need to reform the bridle joints and trim the lattice ready to accept a new frame. I've made these four bridle joints. All that's left is to make the frame that's going to go on the top to complete these two panels. The frame is made from a piece of six by two, which I ripped to size using my new table saw. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of this. I don't think there is any way to prevent dust when cutting rebates on a router table. If you have any suggestions of how to do this, please let me know in the comments. I then add a chamfer to all four corners so that the donor frame looks the same as the original one. Now it's time to tidy up the mess I've made, an easy job for my new dust extractor. A liberal amount of glue and the frame is complete. So that's the frames for the trellis complete. Rather than the measure the positions of the cuts on the legs, I offer up the components and mark out from these. I then turn on my table saw to cut these half lap joints, moving the wood after each cut so that the next will remove more wood. My plan had been to cut these on the bandsaw, but my little bandsaw struggles with wood three inches thick. So I carry on the approach with the table saw. Well, I didn't really want to do it like this, but it's done a half decent job. My first ever half lap joint on the table saw. Note, this non-through cut can't be made with a riving knife installed, but I figure kickback shouldn't be an issue as there isn't an off cut. But one of the downsides is an unguarded blade and a lack of dust collection above the blade. My fingers are well away from the blade, so it's only the dust that's an issue. I then refit the riving knife and crown guard and rip the wood to size. I cut this the wrong side, so I'm just gonna add a little insert to repair it. I'll trim that up and no one will know. It's now sanded down, only took a few seconds really. Not too worried about it because it's going to be on the inside, it's not somewhere where you're actually going to be able to see it anyway. I don't know how I've managed it, but I've made the side pieces too long. It's better than making them too short, I guess. It's looking a bit better now. To make a leg look finished, I think it needs to have a chamfer on the end. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. So I'll quickly add one to each of the legs using my homemade router table. I 
can now assemble the frame, piloting the holes first to prevent splitting and countersinking them before screwing. It doesn't take long for the sides to be assembled. Just a few quick points to note here. First is I haven't actually put this panel in yet. It's just sort of sitting here. And that's because I want to paint everything before I put the panel in. That way it'll be more protected than if I try to paint it when the panel's in. The other is this top frame that I made is um, not the same treated wood as the frames made out of. So I've put it at the top where it's going to get less abuse by the weather. At the bottom, it's likely to fill with water from rain and so on, whereas at the top, everything's gonna drain away and it's more protected by the green roof that's going on. So it's a better position to put it at the top rather than at the bottom. To ensure everything is protected, I paint the frames and lattice before fitting them. I'm using a branded fence paint. The manufacturer says only one coat is necessary, but I'd give it a couple of coats anyway. I found that whilst branded fence paint is much more expensive than big box store paint, its colour does last years longer, so it feels like it's worth it spending that little extra. Once everything is dry, I can move on to securing the lattice into the frame. I then cut all the decking that will form the base of the planter. I have 15 of these to cut. And with the leftover decking, I rip it into roughly one inch strips. These will be used to support the base of the planter and provide some additional bracing. I don't have the space in my workshop to do this in one pass. So I flip the board and attack from the other end. This seems to work remarkably well. I then cut these to length and then pilot holes ready for fitting. If you're still watching, I'd love to know if you would have gone about this project in the same way or if you'd have done things differently. Leave me a comment to let me know. I can now screw these in place at the bottom of the planting frame. The braces need a 45 degree bevel on them. The mitosaur is probably a better tool for this, but it's so messy I'm trying to avoid using it. A few screws and the braces are in place. All that is left is to fit the planter base. It's the wrong time of year to plant up, so I'll have to return to this project but I'd love to hear what plants you would use, so let me know below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, why not subscribe by clicking my logo? It's free, and YouTube will add some of my videos to your feed. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.